reach out Then your skin can bring you so much pain Now I hear you say You got the best of both ways Won't you come and take a walk in my shoes And tell me if you take my place I'm the Welcome to Inside Running Podcast Daily. It is Tuesday, the 6th of August, 2024. We've got a massive agenda tonight. We're going to be talking about the women's 1,500-metre heats, which just happened about half an hour ago, the steeplechase heats. Um, We've got the 5K women's final and a lot of drama involved in that one. So looking forward to talking about that one and the 800-metre final as well, which we'll be chatting about. Welcome to my co-host tonight. She's been to four Olympics, the year 2000 through to the year 2012. She's also the World Cross Country Champion. Benita Willis, welcome to the Inside Runner podcast again. Thanks. Yeah, great to jump on again. And yeah, love talking about all these races. Yeah, I, I really thoroughly enjoyed hearing your opinions on um, Saturday night. So looking forward to hearing a few more of those tonight. And also we've got the Tokyo Olympian. She was 23rd at the marathon. Did you know that Benita was 21st, Ali? She just, she's just pipped you there in 2000 and um what was that, 2008, Benita, Beijing, the 21st finish? Yeah, finished. would have been Beijing, yeah. Yep, yep. But, it, but Ali Pashley's <laughs> I'm, back I'm with us again. That, uh, I'm not surprised that Benita's got a better result than me in the Olympic marathon. The thing is she's got a better result than me in everything she's ever done. <laughs> well, I was no. looking through the stats today, Benita. What happened in 2012 when you come 96th? Oh, a, I, like, yeah, I'd been injured. I hadn't been running much other than Ultra G. And, um, yeah, okay. yeah, and I thought I knew it was going to be my last Olympics and I wasn't keeping anyone out, so I raced. But I always say I wouldn't recommend that to, for people. People that I coach, I wouldn't tell them to race in that situation. Yeah. You finished, though? Wow. Yeah, yeah, and I, I like, you know, you wouldn't, I wouldn't have finished if it wasn't an Olympic marathon. Um, it was probably, like, the hardest race. Like, I, I got, I was in a wheelchair back to the village. It was, like... Pretty, pretty, yeah, it was probably one of the worst experiences of my life with uh, racing. And, yeah, might have been why I stopped racing um, a bit after that too. It was pretty, yeah, it was tough. But, I look, I knew it was going to be hard. Um, and, yeah, and it's probably, I like, as a coach now, I don't want people to go through that experience. So I think, um, you know, I use things that I've learned to help people as well. What was your was it, um, Yeah. Oh, it was like a labral tear, um, I think, somewhere around my hip. Um and I ran a really good marathon at the start of the year to qualify. I think I'd qualified fastest, but um, then I got, yeah, I got this injury and I had my wisdom teeth out and I had a few, I was living in America, I had a few things going on and then, yeah, I just couldn't get it right. Um, so I probably, like, I probably shouldn't have run, to be honest, and pulled out. Um, but then I thought, I thought, yeah, I thought I, I wanted to run because I just didn't really, like, I didn't expect to qualify because I hadn't run a, a marathon Beijing was the last marathon I, that I'd run before I qualified for London Olympics. Um, so I hadn't been racing a lot in four years. So to qualify was huge. And then I wanted, really wanted to go. But, um, look, yeah, if I was keeping someone else, I would have pulled out um, for sure. Is there big things like, you know, being able to call yourself a four-time Olympian instead of a three times and, like, contract clauses and things like that? Like, is it worth doing to push through the pain? No, there's no, no, no contracts I had. Look, I, and looking back at it now, I wouldn't have done it um, because I think it might have prolonged my career if I didn't, didn't mm-hmm. do it because I probably would have been, like, more hungry to do other races. But after that, I was just like, you know, I wasn't that keen on, like, I couldn't race properly after that either. So, yeah, no, I, um, at the time, um, you know, you just want to keep doing stuff. But when you look back on it, it doesn't matter if you've been to two or four or one um, I think it matters, um, you know, how, you, how you've enjoyed it too, and that was not a very enjoyable Olympics. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Let's, 
Let's go to uh, Paris. The 1500 metre heats for the women have just finished. I'm so glad we can talk about the women's 1500 because it feels like for the last four days all we've been talking about is the men. And I guess with a rapid charge round now as well, it's an extra like race to talk about. So, um, yeah, I'm, not that I'm getting sick of the men's 1500, but I feel like the same conversation's just going around in circles. And now we have to talk about the women. Heat one kicked off. Georgia Griffiths was there with us. I've just got my notes here. I've just written perfect, followed all the moves. She laid low, no fuss. She was fourth in 359.2, um, 0.2 off her PB, but she didn't look all out. Like it was a, an amazing run, what, what I saw. What did you guys see? Benetti, you can go first. Yeah, look, um, I think she's a bit of a dark horse. So, like, obviously um, she's not the Aussie that everyone's talking about, um, but, you know, she won Oslo Diamond League and she's got so much strength um, over the longer distances as well. So, um, yeah, she just looked cruisy to me. Um, she followed all the moves. Um, her heat was quite good because it was taken out um, by Janaka. And I think when they take them out a bit faster, I'm always nervous about people falling over in heats. Um, you know, those girls that sh- that should that should qualify and they fall over because there's a lot of a lot more people in these heats, like um, especially Africans that don't race much on the circuit. So they sort of just um, do silly things and cut you off. And I've fallen in these sort of races before but um but her race was was really clean um she followed all the moves looked perfect didn't yeah didn't even look anywhere near near a pb um she looked looked cruisy so yeah i, I give her you know 10 out of 10 it was fantastic yeah ali anything to add there uh not your 1500 happy. meters expertise <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know me <laughs> i've done about one 1500 in my life um yeah now georgia like she I think I sort of get what Benita says about her being a bit of a dark horse, you know, coming from the 800, she's got that speed background, but then we've seen what she's done this year in the longer events over 3K and, yeah, she's just such a smooth mover and I agree she looked calm and made all the right decisions and I think no matter which way the race goes, she can be in the mix. So it was like it was almost a bit of a relief after that first heat too, I think, after watching the men Mm. sort of one by one. I guess, bow out in the heats. It was, um, yeah, it was good to see Georgia just execute it, tick it off and move on to the semis. Just get one on the board. And how good is Tanaka? Whenever she races, I just love that she just goes hard from the start. Like she's just this tiny figure. I think Croak calls her the Japanese princess. Like she just just goes hard. And you've got to feel for it a bit because she just gets swamped at the end all the time. But that's her just one tactic. <laughs> she knows she has to try and run them off, her, off their feet. And um, yeah. if you draw a heat with her, you'd be loving things. Yeah, 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 yeah. She got a bit swamped at the end, didn't she? She got um, a bit checked or she might have checked some people. Yeah, and, she did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, she went backwards pretty quick. But, yeah, I love watching her on the circuit too. So um, see how she goes in rapid charge. But, yeah, I always used to like seeing someone like that's name in my heat um, because you always kind of like, gives you a bit of relief because there's very few people that you can predict what they're going to do, but um, people like her are, f- are fairly predictable. So, um, yeah, it just gives you a relief because you not, sort of know what's going to happen. Yeah, heat two, Lyndon Hall. She went straight to the front and she led for pretty much to the bell. I think the first K was in like 243, so it was it was quick, but it wasn't, you know, break the whole field quick. And they kind of lined up behind her and she kind of got swamped on the ba- in at uh, the bow. She finished eighth in the end. Um, Maya Ramsden, a New Zealander, she had a fantastic last, like, 120 metres. I was really hoping Lyndon was going to do that. She kind of snagged sixth right on the line to go through to the semis. Um, Lyndon ran 403.8. I... I don't know what her prep's been like, but I assume she'd be a tad disappointed in that just because her PB is 356 and she was trying to make it fast. So to still be, what's that, seven seconds off your best. Um, yeah, that's that's my opinion. What do you think, Benita? Yeah, look, um, I thought she had a really hard heat. So just looking at them lining up um, and all the names in her heat, um, and they obviously go off season's best, but... Um, yeah, I thought she had a pretty hard heat. And sometimes the hard, if you've got a hard heat, um, it goes slower because um, there's so many good people and they're sort of all waiting to make their move in the last lap. Um, so Lyndon sort of did the right thing going to the front. And then, yeah, she just didn't have the zip at the end that she normally does. Um, and, I, you know, she's been running um, well even recently. So I think she would have been a bit disappointed. But, um, you know, I reckon she'll come back strongly in repercharge. And, um, yeah, but she just, um, yeah, like, 
Oh, I just thought, she, yeah, that last lap was um, was tough to watch. But um, I thought she did the right thing going to the front and, and just trying to make it on. So maybe she didn't go quite hard enough when she went to the front um, mm. because she is in good shape. But, um, oh, they're, these, they're hard, these races. And um, that sort of made me think back to the men's uh, races, watching that one. Um, but, yeah, but at least she gets another chance. Yeah, very similar, Ellie. Someone that we've seen. Uh,